Hey, everybody. Um, earlier tonight, Dr. Swan asked us um, when was the last time we felt really vulnerable. And for me, that moment is right now, <laughs> which is perfect because that is what we're going to talk about. Hit it, Steve. This isn't the story I was going to share with you today. The one I was going to share with you had one purpose, which was to get you to like me for you to think that I'm a cool and interesting person so that you'll want to get to know me. It was to be about a story about a girl who one day made a decision. It was a story about trading academia for Hollywood nights, for joining rock and roll bands and hanging out with rock and roll celebrities, for learning wild love and how to cope when that disappears. It was a story about how she got back on her feet time after time, about taking risks, about the search for one's place in the world and what that search can reveal, whether it is in Costa Rica or while zigzagging across the US in an RV or flying down the road on a motorcycle. But that isn't the story I'm gonna share with you today. Today, I'll be sharing something else. Anyone can tell you their stories Anyone can tell you to take the road less traveled or to listen to your heart when making decisions, but not everyone can show you what it actually looks like to be terrified and do something anyway. You'll notice that I didn't memorize this. I'm reading it. You can see that I'm reading it. What you can't see, though, is that I was too afraid to come up here without the text. I was too afraid to rely on memory. I was too afraid to get lost or distracted, and I wanted to be the best. I could be up here, but I needed help. The truth is, I've been scared to come up here and talk to you. I agonized over this for weeks. I wanted to say something helpful and impactful. I wanted to entertain you and make you laugh. I didn't want to pass up my one opportunity to show the community who I am because I want what most people want, to be liked, to be seen, and to feel connected. I work from home, so I don't meet a lot of guys, so I also wanted to appear desirable to the single guys in the crowd. <laughs> this was my chance. <laughs> I want. <laughs> I wanted you to see pictures of my life, and I wanted you to know more, and I wanted you to reach out to me and ask. But I'm telling you this story because, for me, this is what living a wild heart life looks like. This is what it feels like. Raw, honest, sincere, telling the truth to yourself and others, even when it's embarrassing. The kind of world I want to live in is the kind of world where people do this, and so I figured that I would go first in the hopes that maybe one person out there needs to see someone go first before they can push through their own. A lot of people who hear the term wild heart think it's all about taking the road less traveled or living a laptop lifestyle full of location independence and freedom or joining a rock and roll band when you're groomed to be an academic or moving to a place where you know virtually no one and creating a life for yourself, or driving around in an RV with no end point or no destination. All of these things I've done and felt like wild-hearted choices because they were the most fulfilling ones at the time. But to me, they are all far less interesting than what it actually means to live a wild heart life, which is living a life of being honest and courageous in the face of those things that absolutely terrify you. This is the kind of world I want to live in, one where you don't wonder if the person you're dating likes you, you ask them, or you reach out to your friends and let them know you need their help, or when you tell your spouse that you feel lonely even when they're around. All of these things arguably are more courageous than skydiving or living on a beach. Anyone can do that. Not everyone can risk being painfully embarrassed and completely exposed. The world I want to be in is one in which we don't hide what we're thinking or feeling because we're too scared. 
I'm certain that there are things that you want too, things that scare you. Maybe you want to quit your job or leave your relationship or become an artist. Or maybe you want to ask the cutie at the coffee shop out on a date. Or maybe your big scary thing is admitting to yourself that your biggest goal in life right now is to stay at home with your kids. I really hesitated to share this story with you. Believe me, it's not the one that I wanted to share. It's the one that I felt like I had to share if I'm truly walking my talk as a wild-hearted person. It felt like a risky choice, but what I'd be risking by sharing a flashier or sexier story I believe is far more detrimental to my life than what I'm risking right now by sharing with you my heart. I would have been risking opportunities for connection, for closeness, and for intimacy. I'd have risked not letting people see me and help me. I'd be risking personal integrity on a deeper level. For the past two weeks, I've been getting terrible anxiety. <laughs> I've been up at 3 a.m haunted by imaginary thoughts and expectations of what you might have for me tonight, haunted by the feeling of letting you down, and haunted by my own expectations for myself. The truth is, I don't have all the answers, and I wouldn't trust anybody who said that they did. But what I do know is that two nights ago, I made a decision. I was tired of feeling like I had to be perfect up here, I told myself, you're scared, but you're doing it anyway. And I realized it was the same thing I told myself when I moved to Hollywood and moved to Costa Rica and moved here to Montana. It's the only way any valuable change happens. Tonight is all about love, passion, and devotion. And for me, this is me being devoted to myself enough to do the scary thing. And that's usually when my life changes. By allowing me to be up here, you've given me the opportunity to be honest and to experience a positive change for myself. And for that, I thank you. Thank you.